Sagittarius, and this is your live October reading. So I'm going to show you how I make my piles. So the first thing I'm going to do is just choose the Everyday Witch Tarot, which is a nice everyday energy. And I like this very much. And then I'm going to make three piles of it for my three choices for your pick a card. And I do a variety of, of amounts of cards, usually about three per pile. We have two coming out. We're just going to shuffle that one again. Okay. For pile one. What the spirit want us to know for pile one. I'm going to scoot down this. I just wanted you to see the witch. There's the witch. Okay, now. <laughs> All right, we have the Five of Swords. Interesting. Okay, Let's see what else for pile one. The Magician. Perfect. I feel like there's only one boss so this feels like there's this is a career message and nine of wands okay there could be a bit of frustration and maybe having to like this is a wounded warrior but there might be a bit of having to prove that you know your stuff okay that's pile one, and we'll get to that in a minute. Let's let's do pile two's reading uh, messages. Three cards for pile two. I'm doing this, okay. Ooh, you have the Queen of Pentacles, nice. So money's good for pile two. <laughs> Sitting pretty with your abundance. The reason why I'm doing this is because there's so much work that goes in behind the scenes of when I <coughs> um, make these videos. I just want you to, I want you to take, take you on this journey with me this time around. <laughs> It, it can be a little bit, I, I like to edit and clean it up real nice so it's simple and straightforward and then get heart, straight to the heart of the matter of the message. And, um, but the, here's the opposite of that, <laughs> the, the extended version of how we get there. Okay, you have seven of wands. So a little bit of defense over here too this could be like a little bit of somebody jealous of your accomplishments and maybe a bit of defense on your part, part or maybe somebody else's maybe you're defending you know maybe you're defending your belief systems and also you know, when anybody's just plain jealous, it doesn't even make any sense. It's like, you have your, you know, you do you, girl, boy, go for it. <laughs> like, there's a lot in my life that's not perfect. Okay, the star. But you definitely, this one is definitely star quality. Very much getting the attention. Maybe um, too many fans or too many people around you. You have to kind of put a pro protective shield up there. Okay, now we're going to move on to pile number three. See, the messages come right away for me. When I first used to do um, tarot readings, I would just write everything down on a piece of paper. Okay, I'm going to start over with that one. And 
as the messages came, I would write it down and I'd have like this really succinct kind of message. But sometimes, uh, and we just took a lot of preparation behind the scenes. I like to do, I like to make the piles and just read them as I go now and not, and not do too much prep time, but We've got the five of wands, so the fives are coming out. I just feel like all three piles representing the, the collective is showing that October is kind of a, a, a busy month of relating to people, especially in your workplace, like groups and stuff, and not always seeing eye to eye with other people, but I feel like you basically standing out. So here's another five of wands, like too many, um, witches in just one cauldron I don't know like it, it's like too many bosses and not enough support energy or in other words like too many cardinal signs and not enough and not enough to fixed or communicator signs you know multiple communicators fixed organizers cardinal leaders those are the three types there when you're in a situation where you have too many cardinal leaders, it's it's hard to get a lot done. This could also represent world things as well that we're dealing with right now. And we have the strength card, which is good. So I feel like you coming out on top and working with your, this is like working with what you have, your gifts. And we have the set. We got a few more. But I think we'll end it with the Seven of Pentacles because that seems like a good ending on, on this pile. To me, it represents the ability to uh, represents the ability to do much do to conquer all your tasks to get to achieve to achieve a lot. It's also a bit of divine timing knowing when's the right time to pluck that juicy peach you know down from the tree and eat it you can do it as early as you want but you have to also face the outcome so in other words if you're gonna pick that peach early it might not taste good it might be too hard it won't be juicy if you wait a little bit it might be just right so there could be just like and the, the other thing is could be like not in your time but divine time sometimes that's what's ha what happens with with this seven of pentacles energy but it's also just it's a very it's a very happy energy it's it's um feeling pleasure in your environment and feeling accomplished and doing well and see it looks almost like she's making wine because she she knows just when to pluck the grapes and everything so some of you who are related to wine could could be um resonate with this one okay so let's continue. I'm going to do a little Autumn's Delight now to add to the piles. Okay. You can take this as kind of a fun Saturday afternoon ASMR <laughs> workshop. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Ooh, we have strength. That's really good for pile one. I wonder if I need to get how many. So sometimes I do this too. Like I'll put these guys to the side and I just kind of see how they line up. Do I need, um, maybe, yeah, I could get, I could probably, when I go, when I make my video, I'll do it sort of a overhead angle and I did two rows, and usually they're longer and and shorter, shorter in height and longer in width. And so it's important not to get like like sometimes I get like little cards just to fill in the space to look nice. But let's um, let's probably get and one more autumn's delight. Okay, nice. We got diversity. So that looks like a good. Thing for pile one and we'll talk a little bit about that so what about pile two what do we have for pile two I 
And like, you know, right now you can like root for your favorite pile. Go pile two. You're going to be the one with the best cards. <laughs> Results and stuff. This is really good. So yes, achievement to here. Okay. And let's see what for pile three. I do this back behind the scenes things in different ways. Sometimes I just sit with the cards. Sometimes I do a lot of reading, research. I meditate. Sometimes like little rituals to call in upon positive energy. We have creativity and expulsion. Hmm. I wonder what that can mean. You know what, I feel like that's um, not letting anything get in the way of your creativity, like releasing that the toxic energy, the, the negative energy. But it's a little bit, feels a little bit, uh, let's get an alternative for expulsion. I feel like it needs a different one. See, when it, sometimes when it doesn't vibe or when, this is, might be the general message, but it was kind of using ex not exactly the right word then I feel like that energy needs something else. Okay, we got habits and magic. See, that might be just like a softer way of talking about the change and some kind of way of doing something. Mm -hmm. and, and cell phone too, creativity with your habits. Interesting, I think that's kind of neat with magic too. And sometimes I'll, uh, if a card, one card doesn't explain well and the, another card came out, I think, think maybe this works better. Like these two together could have represented expulsion because to see how the, there's like magic coming out but and there's like smoke coming out of the expulsion. I just don't want to use that one for some reason. It just doesn't vibrate with me right for this pile. But I think those two work well. Okay, so then we're going to use the tarot, the Halloween Oracle. And because of Halloween being at the end of October, let's, that's kind of like our little extra message here. What I like to do with the Halloween Oracle is read from it because Stacy DeMarco is pretty amazing and I just... I feel like the words are very important. Some sometimes, well, for me, it's always a combination of the image, the author, and intuition and channeled messages. So it's all of it. I don't like to exclude. I don't like to just be like, oh, it's only what I'm, what's coming to me. That's the answer. I like to take the perspective of the author as well sometimes, or sometimes the author has key words that spirits actually guiding me to. So I don't feel like it's right to be, I don't feel like it's right to be elitist when it comes to, I mean, there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's like really just, it's very natural and organic. You just kind of go with it. All right. So let's see what you're, I'm just going to take one for each. Okay, I'm going to try again. One for each. Pile. Okay, for pile one. By the way, I colored the edges black myself. Come like that. I, th I actually think. Did I trim these two? Probably. Maybe. See, I'm all about not having borders. But there's just some decks you just you can cut. All right, zombie wants to come out twice. So this is control, which kind of seems like a serious message. So we'll get to that for pile one. I think generally zombie you know zombies energy right now is telling me don't just don't just blindly do something or go with the herd kind of thing and just just do it because everybody's doing it or just follow along because everybody's doing it and you know you're just kind of a 
you don't have a mind of your own that's the energy i'm getting here but the the poem that goes with this is saying the dead arise voice a mumbling after our brains our screams they're tumbling <laughs> so it's kind of very fashionable right the whole zombie thing and we'll talk about that more when you get to your pile or when you choose your pile let's see for pile number two A lot of times these energies, they were, they can represent you, but they can also represent the out, outer world around you and the things that you have to face. Sometimes you're up against groups of people who have that kind of mentality, that kind of style about them. Sometimes it's so easy to go along with them too. Like going against the grain can be so challenging and look at that where ghost came out twice again too so ghost wants to come out again so ghost is out about regret there was an interesting ghost card in the seasons of the witch Samhain oracle and it was very very profound it was well the one that i read was the poltergeist that type of ghost that's a trickster the, and but it was combined with when I did the flip through review, I did a little reading at the end. It was combined with reviewing your, your life. So those two together kind of remind me of this regret kind of energy. I, I hate having regrets. I usually tend to avoid having regrets because I feel like everything happens for a reason. There's, I feel like maybe one regret that I have in my life and it's kind of silly, but in high school, I had the opportunity to go to Norway, but I had to, so there's a couple of things that we had to do. I was in the high school for performing and visual arts and I was in theater and I had to do, I had to do kind of an acting scene and then write a, an essay why I wanted to go to Norway. I wrote the essay and the essay turned out great. In fact, the principal called me into our office Miss Norman, she's like, this is a really nice essay, and I would really love to, to send you to Norway, but you didn't do the acting part of this. <laughs> and I, it was because I was embarrassed. I was shy. I wasn't brave enough. Also, I was afraid that it was too expensive. My parents couldn't do it. or I don't know. I didn't know the details of the financial thing, but I knew that in my heart that my parents were always struggling with money. So I was always trying to avoid making them pay for anything uh, extraneous. And, and so I had this kind of guilt that was associated with that. And so I think my only regret in life sometimes is being braver and bolder when I could have been at a younger age, you know? Like not worrying so much about other people and and do just doing things as much as I could do them, you know, just out of just out of the sure joy of it. I wasn't a real huge group type of person, so like hanging out with this certain people that were going to Norway, I wasn't even sure if, how comfortable I'd feel with them. But you know, it would have been an interesting adventure, I think. It would have been. <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. I Everything happens for a reason. And maybe for some reason I wasn't meant to go. And I am happy that, you know, I ha I've had other adventures in my life. So don't have any regrets. There's, there's other regrets people have all the time when it comes to choosing people that they chose in their lives. And I know that it would be easy to try to erase that period of history but it's important it helps you to be who you are right now so don't don't regret it too much because maybe you don't know even realize how it would have helped you the ghost makes me think of lots of ghost stories like like a christmas carol when he's visited by the ghost of past present and future it's such a life changing and life explaining message um like ghost stories like um, when people when when a ghost comes or comes through and shows you like this kind of what could have been or 
uh, where you are. I, I missed, I'm lost seeing now that there was a message that was downloading and suddenly it dropped because I couldn't hold two messages at the same time. I couldn't hold the the night, the uh, Christmas carol message plus this other one in my head at the same time, or I wasn't holding it, but maybe it'll pop back up. So ghost is regret. And then the, um, the poem is like smoke rising from the ashes, a mist from the sea, the dead are watching. They have come to haunt me. The, what a ghost is, is, is this energy that's unsatisfied. They linger because they feel something has not feel fully completed. When they were here on earth, they weren't able to fully complete something. There's something that needs to be, some kind of chapter that needs to be closed. And so maybe there's a, a something that you need to help that, that energy to close that chapter. Don't let it... A ghost is about like l things that linger you know it's like everything that lingers don't let it linger too long like let it let it go don't let it sit with you like haunt you you know don't let it hang around you if it's not helpful to you and it's not just that I think it's don't it's it's addressing it and clearing it you know you have to help it get to the light basically and then move on so I think that's an interesting thought and message. That poltergeist message from from the flip through review really has kind of stayed with me. The whole idea of 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 how like mental health sometimes can be is is the the reason why sometimes we believe in poltergeists and those kinds of things these kind of these energies that plague us this haunted energy that plagues us is is actually could be like a mental health situation like if you look at it just purely scientifically and not not in a in a supernatural way then it just could you know it, I don't like to look at what you know like an extreme one thing or an, or another to be honest like when it comes to supernatural I don't really like to focus on a very extreme supernatural stuff um I like I kind of feel like there is a little bit of explanation for everything but at the same time I also believe that science isn't just the be all end all of everything either like science is the study of things and science is, is variables and testing things against other things. But we, but you have to have a kind of mean to test something and then who cho decides what the mean energy is. So, so right there, I feel like science also sort of becomes superstitious too, in a way when, when you look at it like that. But at the, but anyway, so, <laughs> so back to the mental health. So if, it doesn't matter whether it's science or spirituality. If it's something that's plaguing you, it needs to be addressed. And you need to figure out how to clear it out, I feel. All right. So let's see what Pile 3 has to say. What Pile 3's message is. And we have... Oh, that was all the hard ones. Werewolf. <laughs> Exploring wildness. But this one's actually kind of fun. I, I like the concept, too, of... There's these three parts of us as humans we're material physical beings we're spiritual beings our brain has logic and in and intuition and instinct so intuition instinct and logic intelligence okay let's put the three eyes we have intelligence intuition and instinct intelligence intuition and instinct intelligence is just book smarts brain smarts uh it's about things that you've learned it's intelligence it's it's the accumulation of everything you learn but it's not necessarily wisdom it's not necessarily the highest level it but it's a good thing to have especially when it comes to work and mundane ch tasks and communication and things like that intelligence is wonderful i love intelligence intuition 
is that knowing, that higher energy, that those downloads from spirit, the 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 something beyond what you what you see in front of you. It, it it feels a little supernatural, but it's not. It's actually part of our spirituality, which is a part of it. It's not a part. A, it's not some kind of made up thing that that we created to to give us ourselves a, a kind of like a self importance. Spirituality is a part of us that that is higher. It's just higher energy. And so that intuition is is definitely something important to rely upon. Instinct is animalistic. Instinct comes from this internal mechanism that we were born with, we were created with in the beginning of time for our pure survival. And so instinct can be very helpful, but it can also be sometimes get in the way of of like our higher energies when we purely fall on instinct to guide us everywhere you know but instinct is very good and if you a, a combination of intuition and instinct is very helpful for when it comes to like stock markets and things like that when you have this kind of gut feeling for something and then you have the higher level crown chakra energies so the werewolf is saying luminosity triggers it a wild moon rises pain and blood and fangs fur and howling and wolf and guises and so yes he's a shapeshifter <laughs> and it's <laughs> it it's this energy whenever the wolf the werewolf comes out makes me think of you know howling at the moon and and running wild and it makes me think of things like camping you know just being without your cell phone being natural in the world you know the woods in nature like really tapping into our to our core physicality um, werewolf energy can also represent our you know sexuality too just that core animalistic energy sometimes that that guides us sometimes it's too much though like i think in er every area of our life we need that balance of intellect intuition and and um i got mosquitoes running around here and the instinct and I feel like sometimes in love, you know, when we are, when we, we're urges is the word, when we are led by our urges, our animal urges, sometimes we can get into trouble. But animal urges can be also helpful, right? And that animal urges is why we procreate and, and multiply and have, you know, babies and things. But it's an, it's really great when you have the intellect and the intuition along with those animal urges because intellectually you have to decide for yourself is this a good time for family? <laughs> and intuitively you have to you you kind of release and let God show the way guide your guide your light towards this and sometimes the in, the intuitive and the and the instinct kind of like marry each other. I feel like the intelligence is the kind of not so much opposite, but kind of can keep you grounded in some ways, but in other ways keep you from following your intuitive nature. So, so when when people talk about the mind, they talk they show the mind as this is your like thoughts and you are not your thoughts They're, your thoughts are just there or they come through you are the observer of your thoughts okay so be sure to just remember that even though your intelligent intelligence is wonderful it's an, it's an amazing thing you know like it's fun because <laughs> i'll be doing a video and it's all this deep information and i'm giving you all this intuitive and a pour outpouring of of my thoughts feelings and a outpouring of all this channeled energy and like really you know sh you know like trying my best to be the guiding light and help you and then the comment in the in the comment section will be something like 
well, blah, 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 you know, be like a very intellectual explanation of this card was da, 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 and da, 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 da. I'm like, that's great information, right? It's intellectual and it's wonderful information, but um, it's not the point. <laughs> that's not the point. See the forest, be, you know, for the trees, like look past the, past just the intellectual or the surface or the cookie cutter or the squared or the way you spell something like if somebody spells something wrong how does that change how does it change the reading at all you know things like that you know I don't mind anymore really at first it, it kind of annoyed me a little bit but I kind of appreciate any comment honestly I like anybody's uh, except for of course the the toxic ones and luckily I haven't had any of those very much lately but so so yeah um so that's that <laughs> see that's what happens I all these thoughts go through my head as I'm doing these read these cards now I'm gonna throw in a Maybon Oracle too from Seasons of the Witch Kitchen witchery, that's nice. Abundance flows easily and effortlessly into your life. Be in gratitude. Nice. Oh, and see the shape shifting. That should I'm gonna put that with the werewolf. Transformation is not the loss of what once was, it is the evolution of a more powerful self. See? Very good. And Reaper. For the birth of something new to manifest the death of something holding you back is inevitable and that goes good with the ghost so you see how um, topics start to form and this pile number two i feel like they're letting go of things especially with the ghost and the reaper right and and steps and results i feel like there is steps in the right direction somebody shining very brightly okay so let's keep going and we're going to use a little season of the witch Sawin. and at this point I'm thinking what's going to be my thumbnail do I use the this oracle maybe sometimes I like you know the graphic image what have I been doing late? And I think about that too. Like, what were my other monthly videos? What did they look like? And then I realized, man, I like I like diversity. I like to change things up. <laughs> but do other people like diversity? Do or do they like habits and rituals? <laughs> so we have nature spirit. This looks like a good one. On your toes, twirl and twirl until you're ready to take flight. They arrive in the winds beneath your wings and spe speak through the swaying of the trees. Nice. This is like my bedroom. Like I have sort of a bird theme going on in my bedroom. Okay. Let's see what pile two is. Okay. And we have bats. Invoke thy power and fear not the hidden. What lurks is coming with undenying change. Change again. Change, change, change. Your pile too. <laughs> and I just don't want you to not see the beauty of this pretty... Okay, and pumpkin. Uncaging the spirit within thou, the fertile power you hold to taste your buttery velvet upon tongue is a gift I shall cherish each day that comes. <laughs> Very beautiful. That poetry, especially in the Samhain Oracle, is so sweet. All right, so um, 
we used every deck that I have and I think for love we'll throw in a little bit of a romantic fairy at the, it is like at this point that I wish I had a fairy a romantic deck that was orange <laughs> sometimes the autumn's delight is romantic but so it's okay pink is nice as well so for pile one okay pile one what's what's coming next in love for pile number one Okay, we have natural evolution. Let the situation unfold naturally and a perfect match. You complete each other in the most harmonious way. Very nice. Pile two, what's coming next in love? We have psychic connection and self-love. Love yourself first. And then pile three. Okay, something hidden. Um, a disguise. Some elements of this relationship are hidden. Now being Halloween, I can see costume parties and masks for also being with that card. And love language, physical touch, a tender touch means so much. And now also for each pile, I need to get some charms. Oh, I have an idea. So here's a part where I would like pause the video and come back and you would never know I was gone. But since we're live, I have to, oh no, I don't, I just realized I have to really dig into my closet to get it. I did not get it out. Hmm. Would I have to dig into my closet? I think so. But, but every uh, Halloween I use my, I use my spider bowl. All right, well, I'm going to get the, I'm going to get the charms, but when I turn this into a regular pick card, then you'll see the charms on the spider bowl, I think. <laughs> All right, pile number one. Pile number two. Some, sometimes I, I mean, put the pile, the charms back and you'll have repeat charms. Hi, Greg! <laughs> and pile number three. I don't know why I'm doing this this time. Oh, you guys, this, you know, this is, this is the top of my, of my crystal, crystal ball. So this is, it came off its like little holder, but this is actually not a marble. It is, represents a crystal ball. All right, so let's see what each pile talks about. So we have the number five, and all piles have kind of that five energy. Five energy is just making me feel like just dealing with people in general, where, whether it's work, whether it's mundane things like, uh, you know, playing games, video games, or sports, or things like that. Also, whether it's watching people interact like on tv like in in group settings um yeah just like i mean if you're like my son and watch hell's kitchen or something or if you're watching politics and you're seeing the senate or whatever if you wherever you're watching things you can see this five struggle this the wands and the swords came out both of those came out in these piles so that five energy but um so so you kind of have to decide for yourself, are you going to be like a follower, or are you going to stand out, or are you going to keep quiet, are you going to be, you know, what, 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 how do you play your part within a group, right? Are you the leader? Are you the organizer? Are you the communicator? <laughs> All right, so we have, um, but five can also represent a day, you know, like date or five days until you meet somebody, or five days until something happens, or on the 5th of October something happens. We have the bust, 
The bus for me particularly represents an old job. So it could be like the job that you that you want to leave so you can do something else. In fact, five energy, it was both five of wands and five of swords that that I felt when I did my bus driver job, although I also felt good energy from it too, that the the challenging energy got to be too much, right? The politics of it got to be too much. So that could be something that you might be dealing with. But I feel like also if you're a parent, you know, the school bus could be something having to do with kids and schools and things. And on another note, in a positive way, the bus could represent transportation from one place to another. It could be something fun, like a casino drive from Houston to Louisiana, Texas to Louisiana, whatever. Like, but it's it does represent group again to me, group activities. We also have New York, so it could be destination. We have music here. We have a hand, like lending a hand. We have the fairy with the moon, so it's like dreams and love. And then we have the pink flamingo, to me, represents an unusual person, somebody who is a kind of eccentric, out, thinks outside the box, but very balanced. Even though they may appear different or they may behave a little differently, they have a very balanced personality. And the rooster to me represents waking up early, don't sleep past your alarm, really get a good head start on things. And also like wake up calls, just, you know, don't be in denial or don't ignore something when, when um, some message is trying to come out to you. All right, and so pile two, we have, uh, we have, that's Anna, or is that Elsa? Let me see. Yeah, it's Elsa. So the single woman, this the single woman who's very attached to spirit. We have Texas here, and theater under the stars. So it could be some kind of under the star situation. I feel like because of the psychic connection with somebody here, you may be in separation or in a five D connection with somebody, and uh, oh, but it could be some something turning into. Uh, something more substantial there is this transformation energy behind the cards so um so yeah like a possible engagement coming through uh we have the airplane so traveling and the fairy bringing good luck we also have music in this one and also kind of a strange appearance with this strange looking uh giraffe tall beautiful we have the the red thread which binds two people much like twin flames we have the little feet so it could be, represent spirit babies or something being birthed something new or something about feet oh <laughs> feet um, yeah, and then the the snowflake is like no two snowflakes are alike. You have this great idea. This key is very kind of weird looking. It could represent opening up sort of like a lockbox or some mysterious place that something that has money in it or something that's just um, unexpected. You also have the scissors, which could represent cutting something and also representing crafts cutting cords Ooh, you have the scissors and the cord but look the scissors i take it seriously when the scissors are closed it means no cutting is allowed <laughs> it's just um the scissors just represent to me like the option the it's there but it's not allowed or something because the cord never get can get cut especially the red thread or the cord that connects to twin flames and then here, pile number three, we have the ring, another ring. So some more commitment, another engagement. This one is the men's wedding, wedding ring. So this could be a male who's committed to you or a male who's divorcing somebody. So taking off a ring or putting on a ring. And we have cool. We have the elephant representing family. We have the little fish. We have um, a lock. Here, it's keeping it locked up and we have the goat that climbs the mountains and the goat representing like achievement and success and progress here we have um, patron saint Margaret who is 
connected to Christ consciousness. And we have St. Teresa. St. Teresa represents, so I have my little St. Cheat Cheat right here by my St. Teresa from of Calcutta is about World Youth Day. And it can also be about the um, people who are sick and poor. So you could be helping out like less fortunate people. But um, anyway, you have also Aquarius. Aquarius is is the friendly energy and the cards to me when the cards come out it's saying that this is legitimate and look at yes watch tarot readings watch the cards look to your you know you the fortune or maybe you're you are a spiritual guide and you use these tools to help other people too it's not so much about Sometimes it is predicting the future and helping with choices, but generally it's about energies that could be helpful, beneficial, and energies that can be sort of restrictive. So you have, you know, that's what I like to shine a light on. What what's good time in you know timing, divine timing for things. Also, there is a higher higher force with spirit. And sometimes we don't always know the divine time for things. We have to just let go and let spirit guide us. But still, I think it it, it can be helpful to work, work out issues through readings because things surface, come to the surface that may, we may have never really thought about before. We may never really have um, uh, pondered. We may... We may we we come to more of a self awareness than we might normally do. It's it's a little because because tarot and astrology is so connected to me to psychology and the reason you know why we are the way we are kind of energy or why things happen the way they happen and what to do about it. Um, it's like when we when we deal with tarot and astrology, it's kind of like having little therapy sessions. And so it's also kind of self-therapy as well when you do this for yourself. It's not always about finding out what's happening tomorrow or when I'm going to, you know, get a promotion or when is my boyfriend going to come, you know, and tell him, ask me to marry him or whatever. You know, it's not always about those kinds of things. It's what lies behind those questions. The tarot will and the other cards will help express and show you, give you some clues and introspection and the ability to be more self-aware about why these issues come up and why you're thinking about them, why you talk about them, and and what you can do for yourself not so much in a solution to get to your goal, but a solution to get to acceptance of your, who you are and to get to a point of self-worth of who you are as well. All right, everybody. So there you have it. That is your three piles. And I'm going to now, I don't know what I'm going to do. Now. <laughs> I was going to go live, like ask questions, you know, answer questions and things like that. But I think I'm going to stop it here. And then I'm going to form the, the pick a card. And so you can choose the pile in the old fashioned way. But I hope you liked just seeing the behind the scenes a little bit here. And, um, and then maybe I'll go back live to answer questions again. I don't know. What am I doing? What am I doing, you guys? Tell me. <laughs> anyway, I hope you like that. I, before I go, um, like I always do, I like to say please like and subscribe and to become part of this channel. If you visit, and I appreciate so much any anybody who likes to stop by and check this out, please um, consider subscribing. Yeah. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much. If you are a subscriber and you want to become a member, that would be really, really awesome. I'm going to shout out some of my members here. I have different tiers, and so my top tier is called the Platinum Pixie. Platinum Pixie is $25 a month, and with that, you get a lot of benefits. You get a reading that's 25 minutes long plus charms. And you also get badges and emojis and a lot of fun ways to communicate during our lives. 
and my platinum pixies are Claudia Lane and Cheryl Borelli. There's the Golden Fairy level, which is $15. There's the Twin Flame, which is $9.99, and you get an 11 minute and 11 second reading for your about your Twin Flame. And at 11.11, then I will tell you your special word that you have to focus on. So whatever card or whatever word I say at 11.11, that's your special word for your connection with your person. And Jolene Sutton and Louisa Silva and Mary Joy are part of that group. The Fool of Faith Fool of Faithers is $5 a month and it's just a general kind of like oracle message. It can be any deck you choose. Wolfie often asks for specific decks and I love that because it makes my life simpler when I know what to reach for. And some usually this is like just a general message, something that you might, it could be a yes or no question, it could be anything, or just give me some general energy from spirit for this month or something like that. And so Wolfie Baby Doll is part of that, Laura Ochoa and Weird Sister Oracle Liz. And by the way, I have a few channels that have subscribed to me like Weird Sisters Oracle, so check her out. And um, yeah, and also... Uh, Divine Pearls Medium is a sparkle of light, so check her out as well. And speaking of sparkles of light, I have a nice list of sparkles of light. The sparkles of light is a $1.99 um, tier. It's just super nice for you to, to just give me a couple of dollars a month to help me with whatever, you know, just like it adds up. It really helps the channel. It helps provide a lot of this great information and in these decks to you and um and and uh, also just the community is lovely just love having this group of people that have that special you know uh, emoji by their name the special badge that says that they're a sparkle of light they're official everyone's official here <laughs> but even if you're not uh, a member you're still my sparkle of light because if you follow me you you bring light into my life so this the official sparkles of light is guacamole stoya divine pearls medium maurice evans patricia andres alexis miss fred giggles rainbow esmeralda gloria um denise and terry there's somebody named no name no name and i think they've been part of my my uh, sparkles of light for a very long time and people come and go so if I didn't call your name just let me know but um, sometimes you change tears sometimes you leave for a month sometimes you come back and that's all good because because your status never goes down like once you've joined you you grow with the channel and the bat you keep your badge and you'll continue to get the next highest level badge as well and so I keep drawing and designing and by the way the badges the badges that you see are ones that I designed myself so so you get a special piece of art next to your name when you become a member and speaking of art thank you so much for those of you who follow me on patreon too patreon is another place hi Bella <laughs> Patron's another place where I um, where I do readings and stuff, but I've changed the tiers a little bit on Patron now, where I'm not I'm no longer uh, doing I don't even remember how I changed it, but I'm not going to do full out readings. It's just going to be a place where you can support my artwork um, generally. But you can reach out to me if you if there's something you need according to your tier, you can reach out to me to get a special favor. <laughs> but basically, it's going to be it's different now since since most of my subscription my membership energy is is on youtube i decided to change up the rules a little bit on patreon and thank you terry so much for being on uh, a patron as well and so you can see my artwork over there i've been really i i uh I, I asked a lot last year, I remember I saying, please help me get an iPad Pro so I can use Procreate and then do digital artwork, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> and so I did. I got it for Christmas, thanks to your help. Um, definitely it was my daughter and, and her boyfriend that, that finally bought it for me, but I couldn't have been able to to even get to the point to the point of asking for it unless you had 
supported me last year. So the patrons that have supported me, you really helped help that energy come through for me to get that. So this year has been sort of an exploration on doing digital art and I've been having a really fun time. You can check out um, the latest digital art piece that I did of my mom, um, a black and white picture of her when she was younger and um, it's her singing with that. And so check that out, you might like that. And also I did one of Margot Robbie with um, with Billie Eilish's song that uh, she sings during the Barbie movie. So that one's kind of nice too. Um, that one is copyrighted, so I don't know if everybody will be able to see that, but if you want to see it, just let me know and I can send you a link to it. Anyway, I, I'll post those up on, on, on um, on my patreon page as well but thank you all for being here now I'm going to convert this into a regular pick a card and then I'll get back with you maybe later today and go live but I wanted to go ahead and get my October reading out and I figured um I'll just show you a little behind the scenes process <laughs> all right everybody so now that I've done all the work I'm just gonna lay out the cards for you and not going to talk a lot about every single card. I'm just going to give basic boom, boom, boom readings for everybody for the pick a card. But if you want to come back to this behind the scenes, then you can see how these messages came about. I think that's how I'm going to work this. So thank you for being here. Thank you, Bella, for coming by. And thank you so much, Greg. Really, really appreciate you so much. All right, I'm going to turn this into a pick a card. And maybe I'll see you later tonight. It just depends. I'm being very organic today. I'm just kind of going with my guts today. <laughs> so I'll see you guys later. Faith Justin Pixie Dust.